Hey guys, I am Andrew Chen. One of my favorite techniques in machine learning has always been your style transfer. Before I get into anything, I just want to shut up right now and I'm going to give you guys a demo on your style transfer. So welcome to the demo and let me get this thing set up. Wait, why is it not? <laughs> Do I look like a monkey in that one? Uh, this is Stereo Night, of course. I'm gonna go to my favorite one. Alright, and this one is my favorite one because just look at like like we can tell that this is not just you know applying like a just throwing a, a picture on top of another we are actually making some changes and we can see the picture that is that has newer style transfer applied like it became like thicker and it's more geometric than the original one so that's why i love this technique like it brings so much different feels to an image and so this is a sam sample picture and do you just like feel the feel in this one? The Doge plus Hysteria Knife. This picture is pretty whack. You can you can become your own Van Gogh. You can apply uh, Hysteria Knife to the houses. Hysteria Knife to... Is that like the California Bridge or something? Golden State Bridge? Yeah, like that right there. Oh, that is actually time lapse of uh, how we train our image. That is interesting. The... The basic idea of newer style transfer is that we take two images to generate one new image. We extract the style of one of the image and make it the style providing image, and then we extract the content from the other image and make it the content providing image. Then we will generate the generated image that will contain the content from the content providing image and then the style from the style providing image. So how do we exactly extract the style and the content? In intuitively, intuitively speaking, you might want to somehow detect the edges of an image because the edges of an object might represent your objects, but it goes deeper than that. And it seems like you can just lay the stereotype picture over the edges detected to make it the style, but it goes deeper than that. And if you don't know about convolutional neural networks and a little bit about neural style transfer already, in, in short, we use feature maps in a convolutional neural network to represent the content and style images. Before I get into feature maps and CNNs, let me first bring to you the history of neural style transfer. It all came around when in 2015, Gats Italia introduced this technique. So as you can see in the highlighted quote, the abstract is stating that neural style transfer offers a path to an algorithmic understanding of how humans create and perceive artistic imagery. And in other words, we're trying to represent art through mathematics here. And that's some next level shit, buddy. So, all right, at this point, if you don't know CNN or convolutional neural networks, you wouldn't know what is feature response mean. So let me give you just real quick, a four minute intro to neural networks and convolutional neural networks or CNNs. First of all, if you actually have zero knowledge, zero knowledge of machine learning at all, I would tell you that machine learning is simply a set of data with an input, a set of input maybe, and an output. And then the machine learning algorithms will learn what inputs generates what outputs. So now if you feed a new input in, it can predict a new, a new output. This can be done with images too. Now, as you can see in this example right here, uh, image, this image is being converted to RGB value. So it is between zero and 255. And so now we can work with the map. And traditionally, image processing tasks like recognition localization, detection, were all done by neural networks. It were all done by standard neural networks. And basically it's, let's say you have 5,000 pixels in one picture. And so you have basically 5,000 inputs possible. And for, so 5,000 inputs for a single Y output. And this Y output can be like a car or something. And if the car is the seventh class of the 10 classes possible, the Y value will be an output of seven. 
And so now you have a set of X and Y couple appear. But that X is 5,000 inputs, while that Y is a single number of seven. And, but we will have many pictures though, pictures for every single class. And so we can have thousands and millions of 5,000 input pixels by one single value Y output. Your neural network is going to learn from every single example, and it is going to learn. Listen to me when I hear this, it's very important. It is going to learn a set of weights, a set of weights from these examples. So that when you multiply each one of the 5,000 inputs and one of the 5,000 weights, and you add all those multipli multiplied results together, you are going to get an output value Y. And, you know, this Y can be, is, is preferably, preferably seven, right? If you're trying to predict seven. Um, I'm not gonna deep down into how the model learns that set of weights, but in one sentence, this is how it works. If your inputs are labeled with a Y value of seven, but when you run it through your set of weights, you only get three, you gotta, you gotta adjust those weights. And after adjusting a lot, your neural network is going to have the best set of weights so that an input will highly likely to be mapped to the desired output. And uh, actually, I think I phrased something wrong. For example, um, uh, this, this learning process of the weights is going to be done automatically. You don't have to go in and change your weights because there might be uh, millions and even like freaking maybe trillions of weights that you might have to change. The machine is going to learn that through something on a back propagation. But again, I'm not going to deep dive into that for now. This is again, this is again, how we did things traditionally. Uh, Yan LeCun then brought convolutional neural networks to a thing. What CNN basically does that a normal neural network doesn't do is something called a local receptive field. Think about neural network. Here's a funny thing that all the neural networks or some of the neural networks will not prevent. If you rotate your picture by 90 degrees, your neural network is probably going to mess up because it doesn't recognize the goddamn pixel that are, you know, transposed or whatever. And the CNN will instead do something smart. It will extract features from an image. And when a new picture is feed in, it is going to detect whether or not it has those features. So I just talked a lot about filters and features. But here's an actual example of uh, feature, uh, filters. This right here is a pixel representation of filter. As expected, if we take the dot product of this right here with something like this right here, we can scan out where exactly if there is a filter present. Now, you can pause and look at the example real quick. It's going to make more sense. So in that case, we are able to detect like a smooth curve. The features can get really complex Really easy though. So uh, let's look at this example. In the beginning, it just edges and then it turns into textures, then it turns into patterns and then it turns into like, like fucking like dogs, dog heads over each other. It's getting crazy, but it's all absolutely beautiful. So, so that is a, that is feature for you right there. I just talked about how content is represented. Now let's talk about how style is represented. The style is represented through the correlation between the features in the feature map. Now, as we have seen, we can generate features after after applying filters to our pictures. And the feature responses that represent the content is, are these actual uh, features. Uh, they're generally in the higher levels, but let's use the edges as an, as an example. So these can be the content representation. Now, the style representation is the correlation between these individual features generated. And ultimately, in the end, we are trying to generate an image with the same degree of correlation between the features of this feature map. So now, let us talk about how to generate the actual image. To recap, we talked about neural networks, how it learns a set of weights. And we talk about convolutional neural networks, how it does basically the same thing, trying to learn a set of weights, but it does it in a smarter way by detecting features. Then we talked about how to represent style of a picture and how to represent content of a picture. It is through the correlation between the features in the future map and then the future map itself in the higher levels, respectively. 
To generate the actual image, we can start off with the white noise image as shown on the right. And then hear me when I say this, we must define loss functions. Loss functions are going to determine how far are we from achieving our dreams. So in this case, how far are we from getting that dream image? Then after defining loss functions, we can dedicate our efforts towards optimizing that cost so as it is as low as possible. So this is, this is the formula of how we represent the style of loss. If you're a machine learning engineer, you're gonna love it. If you're not, you might freak out, but let's, let's break this down. First of all, we see a lot of constants, and generally speaking, I don't really give a shit about constants. I just ignore them. And so we skip to this part. This is what you need to watch out. Um, this right here is the gray matrix. And then the big G is saying how, I mean, let's start with the A. The A is saying how closely correlated is the features in your feature map of the style image that you provided. And then the G right here is saying that in your generated image, how strongly are the features in the feature maps correlated. And therefore, the closer these numbers are to each other, the more style of the style image you are exhibiting in your uh, generated image. To represent the content, I can't find this. Oh, to represent the content, F is the... Um, F is the features generated by your white noise image and then P are the features that is actually generated by a content image and then you're trying to make those two as close as possible too so you can exhibit the content and those two loss functions should be combined together at the end you see this right here L total equals L content and L style so that we don't focus too much on one of them and then we're trying to get you know both the content and style it, that, that, that makes more sense so now we defined two loss functions. How do we minimize it? Uh, like in the neural network, when I said that we tuned the weights of the neural network until that the inputs dotted with the weights and you add those together will give you the outcome that you want. Similarly, we will tune the weights in CNN's filters. Remember, we never actually apply weights to the input, but we apply weights to what the input will multiply with to get the output. In this case, our input is convolutionalized uh, with filters. So we're gonna tune the filters until that when we pass the input, we can generate the images that we want. Yeah, there it is. To, to, to recap the whole thing, I actually kind of forgot what we talked about, but I'm pretty sure we talked about neural networks. We talked about convolutional uh, neural ne networks, which are a little bit smarter than neural networks. And then we talked about that style and content are represented by the feature maps in a convolutional neural network. And we define the loss functions for the style and, um, and content image. Then we said that when, once we minimize the loss, we will get the output that we want. Uh, in this video though, I think that I talked about a lot, but what I did not talk about is back propagation and how the neural network actually adjust those weights uh, mathematically because in the video I arbitrarily said that they're going to tune the weights but there's actually a mathematical way to tune those weights and it makes a lot of sense so I guess I'll make a part 2 on this and in part 2 I'll actually be talking about the fast neural network I mean neural style transfer it is a lot faster than Johnson uh, I mean uh, Gatz Italia it is created by Johnson Italia, and yeah, that, that method is just a lot faster. It doesn't run back propagation, so it's actually not tuning the weights every single time. It is instead going to take advantage of something called the Image Transformation Network. It's going to be a really interesting ride, and I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. Before you leave, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you liked the video. But also, if you didn't like my video because, you know, I was repeating stuff too much or I was... Yeah. Anyways, yeah, just make sure to hit that thumbs down button if you didn't like it. And make sure to comment why you didn't like it. Because I'm here, I'm trying to learn from the criticism. Um, I really want to provide you guys with the coolest, outrageous best content possible 
and like in a month I want to be creating like a 10 hour video just on everything about machine learning from computer visions, deep learning, medical applications, everything about that. So stay tuned, love me, love me, if you love me, please hate me hard if you're a hater, and uh, see you guys next time.